All right, guys, welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I'm here to talk to you about two of the most inconsistent fighters in the UFC, Sarah McMahon and Aspen Ladd. Great matchmaking. It's like it's a perfect matchup. These two are both, as I said, inconsistent fighters. Sarah McMahon is a dominant beast, especially in round one. I don't know if she's ever lost a round one. She just kicks everyone's ass. You know, even half of her losses or all of her losses, she's won round one. Misha Tate, Ketlin Vieira, Juliana Pena, whoever the fuck else, Marion Renault. Uh, Sarah McMahon is a beast, but just like um, she's always guaranteed to win round one, she's almost always guaranteed to lose round three. Even in her last fight against Carol Hosa, she lost round three. In a fight she was dominating, she let this great fighter back into the fight. And if she starts to slip against a fighter like Aspen Ladd, Aspen Ladd could make her pay. Because Aspen Ladd is trouble if she gets on top. And Sarah McMahon, obviously being the Olympic uh, wrestler, she's not going to want to be on her back. That's where she finds herself in trouble. You know, the majority of those submission losses came from her back. Aside from the Marion Renault fight, she was on her back against Juliana Pena and... Ketlin Vieira and Misha Tate and whoever the fuck else and you know uh, she's submittable the thing is uh, what's her name Aspen Ladd has that one submission in it as a pro it's over Amanda Bobby Cooper who went on to be a UFC fighter so it's a great win but it was whatever years and years and years ago like her second fight or something so it's a distant memory and she hasn't shown to be the submission artist or even the submission threat that is going to take Sarah McMahon out. Like going into that fight with Juliana Pena, it occurred to me. Uh, she could win via arm triangle if she gets her on her back in round three. And that's what happened. If it was an arm triangle, I don't even know. But speaking of arm triangles, Sarah McMahon has an incredible arm triangle. And that's a path to victory her in, for her in just about every fight. You know, but uh, she's never developed into that mad hughes type of grappler she's uh she's good everywhere and she's a physical force but sarah mcmahon needs to fight as a woman who's conserving her energy because again uh, the majority of her losses come uh, just about every one of them aside from amanda nunez is a fight she was winning which that's something else you know but uh They've also come in the middle of a fight that, you know, she was winning. She gets tapped out or towards the end of the fight. And that's someone who's got cardio problems. It's established and she's 41 right now, I think. So she's got one foot out the door. And especially with her last victory over Carol Hosa, seeing Hosa get back into the fight in round three, I just think... Uh, there's money to be made or you know it's worth putting money on aspen lad to win via round three plus one thousand those are long odds covers the tko and the submission i do think aspen lad is much more of a tko artist you know especially uh from with ground and pound but uh sometimes it's just a matter of the fighters the the losing fighters traits and sarah mcmahon could you know again she typically gets tapped out so uh, I like just playing the, you know, the round three finish because it covers both the TKO and the finish. But really, my prediction for the fight is Sarah McMahon wins. Again, I'm sure she wins round one, bullying Aspen Ladd around. And then from there, it's a matter of conserving her energy and uh, also getting another takedown at least. That's Sarah McMahon's path to victory here is at least two takedowns, if not three, in top control. Don't get me wrong, I think there's room for Sarah to do well on her feet, especially in round one, and she will before she gets her to the ground. Sarah's got a big overhand right, and Aspen Ladd just, you know, she's a good striker, but not a great striker. You know, I'll never forget that fight with Norma Dumont, where I was just screaming like, do something! Well... You know, against a physically superior athlete like Sarah McMahon, she's going to be playing catch-up. She's going to be uh, letting Sarah lead the dance. And I don't know how successful Sarah will be if she'll get a 10-8. I doubt it, really, you know, just statistically. But she's going to at least win the first round 10-9. And knowing that, and also knowing that Sarah McMahon isn't, uh, Aspen Ladd isn't the most uh, efficient submission artist, the most effective sub submission artist or submission threat, I like Sarah McMahon via decision. 
That's my prediction. I think she hangs on, kind of like she did versus Carol Hosa, and largely wins the fight with, uh, you know, the majority of the fight being top position for her. Sarah McMahon, the money line is plus 120. Uh, that's really the bet I like because the decision line is plus 150, which you may as well cover the finish, you know, the cut and whatever. And, of course, the overhand right and the arm triangle and whatever other possible finishes there are for her. But I predict the decision, and I bet the money line, plus 120. Aspen led, I only bet on round three, plus 1,000, because that's really just a bet against Sarah McMahon. Aspen led, she's got to win this fight because, you know, again, she doesn't have one foot out the door. She's in the middle of her career, and if I may say so, I think she's uh, kind of disappointed as of late. She just hasn't looked good. She's been in some tough fights and hasn't really looked to fight her way out of them. You know, fight her way into them, I should say. You know, when she was, uh, she, she, does, she seems easily discouraged. And for a girl who's going to be losing round one, almost guaranteed, in my opinion, that's never a great look. But still, you know, uh, I don't know how discouraged I expect her to be if I'm betting on her winning round three. Because that's, uh, that's going to take some tenacity. So... We'll see what happens, but yeah, gun to my head, I go Sarah McMahon via decision. Thanks for tuning in, and I uh, hope you guys were able to digest the gibberish here.